Near the end of July 1939, the Ionian outward bound from London is lying in the bay unloading stores for the naval base at Gibraltar. The Ionian 3,000 tons, new, clean, fast, top speed 15 knots, is carrying a cargo of steel, explosive, cement, beer, telephone poles, corrugated iron and aeroplane spares from Malta, Haifa, Cyprus and Alexandria. The Ionian is a coal burner, and in these waters the temperature of the stoke hold is about 120 degrees. The engineer tests the oil level. The bearings must be kept from overheating. At noon, Captain Smith is shooting the sun. It is three and a half days run from Gibraltar to Malta. And on the first day out from Jib, the bosun sets the men to rig up awnings as a protection against the sun. A day off Malta sparks the wireless operator Morse's Malta radio. The Ionian will come into Valletta Harbour at six o'clock on Sunday evening. Next morning, we begin unloading steel parts and angle iron for the repair shops in the dockyard. Out of the hold and onto the lighters, we unload stores of every kind. In the floating dock, there is a battleship of the Queen Elizabeth class, the Barham. All over the world, there are big and little ships, some luxurious and some dirty. But the tramps and liners all belong to the same proud family, the British Merchant Navy. In peacetime as in war, it is the job of the Merchant Navy to keep Britain's larders full, to maintain its foreign trade, to take out stores to naval bases and naval ships, and to furnish men for the naval reserve. And in its turn, the Navy protects the merchant ships, their cargoes, their passengers, and their men. Heavy cargo means hardware on the winches. So on the way to Haifa, the crew oil and fit extra strong steel runners. They rig new blocks to take the strain of the heavy gear which the Ionian is carrying for the Navy. We tie up in the new harbour at Haifa, 12 days out from London. Across the harbour lie four G-class destroyers, Garland, Grafton, Griffin and Greyhound. Built in 1936, Fast as whippets, four 4.7-inch guns, eight torpedo tubes, and 145 men. Not a whistle, nor a siren. Only one winch on the Ionian unloading corrugated iron. Against the background of Mount Carmel, we can see the oil dumps filled by the famous pipelines from Iraq. We leave Haifa the same day for Cyprus. At Cyprus we have to call at each of the little ports around the coast. Only at one of them, Farm Augusta, is the water deep enough for the Ionian to go alongside. On the ageless island of Cyprus stand the ruins of many a civilization and all the relics of defeat or conquest in war. But war seems remote indeed in this classic Cyprus on this summer day. At Launica, the next port, we have to lie about a mile out to sea. There is no harbour here. We are right alongside the Shropshire, a cruiser of the county class. From Launica, the Ionian sails round the north of the island to Kyrenia. The last port is Paphos, where once upon a time stood the groves and temple of Venus above the loveliest and most treacherous coastline of the Mediterranean. And there we begin to load locust beans, oil and wine.
From here we sailed due south for Alexandria. In the harbour at Alexandria, the Imperial Airways planes come down like enormous flying fish. Away at the Ionian starboard bow lies one of the battleships of the Mediterranean fleet, the Malaya. The Malaya is in the same class as the Barham at Malta. Oil burning, 31,000 tonnes with a speed of 25 knots, 1,150 men and armed to the teeth. That dark flag is red, the powder flag. It means we have explosives on board. This dangerous cargo is the first to be cleared. Carefully stored inside these crates are aeroplane parts for the RAF depot at Abukir Bay. Now comes the heaviest part of the whole cargo, 700 tons of chains and anchors for the new naval floating dock on the far side of the harbour. The mate watches anxiously. The strain on derricks and winches is terrific. Next comes material for Egypt itself. Cement for new motor roads running from Upper Egypt towards the Sudan. Finally, the Nile boats carry the cement towards Mahmoudia Canal and down to the Nile. Now we take on Egyptian cotton, oil cake and onions loading far into the night. Early next morning, the Ionian sails for home. Past the cruiser Amphion, past the Warspite, past the Malaya. Past destroyers of the Mediterranean fleet. past Gibraltar, out of the sun into the grey waters of the north. At the end of August, beside the Tower of London, the Ionian unloads her last peacetime cargo safely, brought from Cyprus and Alexandria.